most about her was also that she was completely free of pomposity, even when she was making serious points about the future of the democracy or about uh, the West's fascination with marketing India's spirituality into neat, convenient packages, which is what she did in Karma Kola. In our time, you know, we've arrived at this register, this way of speaking that oscillates between outrage, anger, and anguish. And it's as though we've lost the ability to be sarcastic or to be amusing or to speak to each other about serious things with a kind of lightness that she did very well. You know, likewise, when she was sending up the West, she didn't speak with clenched teeth, but she laughed at the fact that they saw karma as another product like Coca-Cola, something that you could buy off the shelf for yourself before you did the circuit and went back. I think she saw things clearly and sometimes she wrote again from, you know, anguish and anger. But she knew how to write that to get across to people with a great deal of humor and she didn't take herself seriously at all. Geeta Mehta was, uh, was a wonderful, wonderful person, effervescent, um, engaging, uh, full of ideas. And the most remarkable thing about her was she was a Renaissance person. She was interested in everything from art to architecture, to people, to ideas, to the past, present, and also um, thinking about the future. I mean, she was very political. She was very sociable. She was full of humor. And I would call her a Renaissance woman. Um, you don't find them these days, they're rare. And I was very privileged to know Gita and shall miss her, miss her spirit.